Hello heroes and villains, welcome to Multiverse. Uh, when I make my video reacting pretty much to the uh, James Gunn uh, DCU announcement, one of you guys had an interesting question. What does this have to do with DC Universe Online? Let's answer that. At the very start of his video, James Gunn mentions that the DC Universe was pretty much disconnected. That one of his job was to make sure that the DCU would be connected with films, with television, with gaming and I'm pretty sure that DC Universe Online counts as gaming and with animation. Also he mentions that uh, they're going to try to be consistent across the board using the same actors playing the same characters uh, that is going to be essentially one story although anything that will not fit within that story will pretty much count as Elseworlds. For example the Batman by Matt Reeves would count as an Elseworld uh, the, the upcoming Joker with a Joaquin Phoenix would count as an Elseworld, and uh, probably a couple of other things. Now, why would they keep the Batman separate as an Elseworld if they're trying to have everything connected? Uh, odds are, they probably have some contractual obligations that they have to meet. That day is from before when James Gunn became the head of DC Studios. And it would seem that as the head of DC Studios, James Gunn will have some influence on the gaming aspect of DC Comics and that does include DC Universe Online unless somehow DC Universe Online count as some sort of Elseworld I guess that could be possible and I can already hear some of you guys ask Multiverse what is an Elseworld? Let's take a look. An Elseworld is pretty much a story that happens outside of the, of the regular DC continuity uh, for example, the very first Elseworld we got was uh, Batman Gotham by Gaslight. It was pretty much uh, a story asking what if Batman existed a hundred years ago and what if he fought the evil Jack the Ripper. I guess uh, you could see that as a what if. If you guys are familiar with what if from Marvel, Elseworld are sort of uh, an equivalent to that. Although not exactly, because uh, what if basically took an event that actually happened in the Marvel Universe and would just look at uh, an alternate version of, the, of that event. For example, when they made a what if about the Dark Phoenix saga, uh, it was a what if Phoenix had lived, as opposed to in the Dark Phoenix saga, Phoenix dies at the end of the story. But what if she had not died? So then they branch out from that point and take a look at what would have happened if Phoenix did not die. Elseworld are, are not exactly that. Elseworld basically takes uh, the DC characters and put them in a completely different setting. So in the case of uh, Batman Gotham by Gaslight, it takes Batman which normally happens during normal times and it puts him a hundred years ago at the time where Jack the Ripper was uh, an evil murderer. And basically we end up with uh, a story where Batman ends up facing off against Jack the Ripper. Other examples of Elseworld stories would be Kingdom Come, Superman Red Sun, and uh, even The Dark Knight Returns. Although when uh, Frank Miller made The Dark Knight Returns, obviously Elseworlds did not exist just yet. It was created a few years afterwards. But retroactively, uh, The Dark Knight Returns in a roundabout ways became the first Elseworld. And if any of you guys uh, watched the CW TV shows, uh, The Flash, Arrow, uh, there was a crossover called the Elseworlds. It was pretty much a story where uh, Oliver Queen becomes the Flash and Barry Allen becomes Green Arrow. It was a, it was a pretty fun bit. And they also used uh, that story at the time to introduce uh, Batwoman to the CW universe. Now, would this Universe Online count as an Elseworld? Uh, yes and no. Uh, basically, uh, if I guess DC Universe Online has always been a sort of an Elseworld or a, an alternate Earth. Uh, when we got DC Universe Online, and not long after that, DC Comics had this huge reboot. You may have heard of it. It was called The New 52. So basically, the, the DC Universe Online decided to reboot all their characters. So we ended up with uh, The New 52, and we ended up with DC Universe Online, which still had a pretty classic version of the DC characters. Uh, basically, at, the, at that point, DC Universe Online pretty much became its own thing uh, because sadly, uh, making a DLC or making new characters for a game uh, it takes a lot longer than making uh, changes in the comics. So there's probably no way, no way at all that DC Universe Online could change everything to match with the New 52. The closest they were able to do was uh, they tried to give us some New 52 styles at some point, like they gave us the Star Wars Defender style, which is pretty much the New 52 Superman style. 
They gave us the Wonder Woman, uh, the new 52 Wonder Woman style, the new 52 Cyborg style, Deathstroke, a bad girl, and the evil Talon from uh, the Court of Owls. So there was no way that they could uh, change the game to match with the new 52, but uh, slowly as time went by, they would slowly change uh, some of the game to kind of match with uh, more modern comics. Not so much a new 52 because uh, within two years a new 52 was gone and it was replaced by Rebirth. Which is pretty much why we got the new Superman design around the time of the Earth 3 DLC. So this Universe Online does try to keep up with uh, modern comics and modern stories uh, the modern version of the characters. But they cannot do that through, for the whole game. They have to do that. Let's say from let's say from this point forward, they could decide to try to do uh, to match with whatever James Gunn is doing with the DC Universe. Although at this point, the devs probably have plans for uh, for the next uh, three, four DLCs already. So I guess they could still change some of their plans, but they probably won't be able to match a hundred percent with what uh, James Gunn James Gunn actually wants. So at some point, we'll probably see uh, DC Universe Online be more connected with whatever it is that uh, James Gunn is planning to do, but it's going to be hard for them to, to change that retroactively throughout the game. Although they are doing that slowly but surely. Uh, for example, when DC Universe Online gave us the uh, Justice League Dark DLC, they gave us a new character model, a new design for Captain Marvel, and they renamed the character Shazam. So they did that to match with uh, the current comics at the time, but also they retroactively changed Captain Marvel throughout the entire game. So when you went back to the earlier missions when you actually do meet Captain Marvel, they had also changed uh, the character to the new model. Although I think the character was still named Captain Marvel for a bit, it took them a while to rename it Shazam. But eventually, slowly but surely, they did rename the character Shazam throughout the entire game and they've been using the new model ever since. So they are changing the game so that it matches with uh, the modern uh, comics, the modern characters, but they're doing that a little bit at a time. Although we still have some of the classic elements here and there, uh, for example, I'm pretty sure we still have the Captain Marvel t-shirt, and I don't think they renamed it uh, the Shazam t-shirt. I think it is still called uh, the Captain Marvel t-shirt. Are they going to keep it the Captain Marvel t-shirt as a memento of uh, what Shazam used to be way back when? Are going to change it to, to the Shazam t-shirt at some point? I have no idea. Although I've heard rumors that there was an upcoming uh, Captain Marvel comic where Shazam would actually be called uh, Captain Marvel once more, uh, which would not really surprise me if it happened. Uh, when they decided to rename uh, Captain Marvel Shazam, they did not really think it through. At uh, first, uh, Shazam is the trigger word that allows him to transform. And we even see it in the trailer for the for uh, Shazam 2, where he, he cannot even say Shazam. He has to to tell uh, his family, uh, say my name, and uh, say my name that uh, that I say when I transform. He, he can't even say Shazam because obviously it will transform him. They tried to have in the comics uh, a workaround would would say that he has to say it with intent or or some stupid crap like that. But it, it didn't really work. And again, in the trailer, we can see why the, the name doesn't work. Also, uh, if you saw, they've added uh, Mary Marvel to the game. And uh, obviously, they cannot call her Mary Marvel anymore because Captain Marvel is no longer Captain Marvel. He's, uh, he's Shazam. I'm surprised they didn't call him Captain Shazam. Oh, well. So they had to just call her Mary. And in order to make her a bit distinctive, they had to put like the Shazam Lee under, under her name. Uh, I know some of you guys maybe find that uh, cute, the old Shazamly thing. If you like it, that's fine. But uh, I, I really don't like that. Uh, so sadly, when they renamed uh, Captain Marvel to Shazam, they did not really think it through, and they did not really think about the ripple effect it would have on the entire quote-unquote Shazam universe. And I have to wonder what James Gunn will do about that. Uh, we do have the upcoming uh, Shazam 2 movie. But uh, we keep on hearing rumors that uh, Zachary Levi is not going to return for the DC Universe. Is going to be one of the actors that do not return. So you have to wonder what uh, James Gunn will do with uh, with Shazam. Will he keep it Shazam? Will he, will he rename it uh, Captain Marvel for his new uh, DC Universe? Uh, I guess we're going to have to wait and see. So James Gunn wants everything to be connected. But again, it may take a while for DC Universe Online to be able to connect with uh, James Gunn's plans. Especially seeing how James Gunn has been the head of uh, DC Studios only for a short while, for a couple of months. 
and by then uh, the devs were probably already planning uh, the next uh, three uh, three DLCs at that point. And we do know that uh, even right now James Gunn is still working on his on his plan for the next ten years. And uh, at the time, like a few months ago, when these Universal and I were planning our, their next uh, two, three, four DLCs, and those plans did not exist just yet. Now they might be able to change some of those plans uh, that are in early development. But most of what they were already planning to make uh, probably cannot be changed. So it might take two, three DLCs before DC Universe Online can truly connect with what uh, James Gunn is planning to do. And I have to wonder, will they redesign Superman to match with the new, uh, the new Superman that James Gunn is planning to give us with his uh, DC Universe? I guess we're gonna have to wait and see. Already when they made the change uh, to Superman to change him for the, the Rebirth version, ironically enough, just a, a month or two later, Superman was back with his uh, red shorts in the comics. Ah, sweet irony. I have to admit, I kind of miss uh, the classic Superman design we had in the game. Uh, once in a while, I will look at the Superman legend, uh, thinking of, uh, of the olden days, of the days of way back when. Ah, that's the sweet memories. Uh, another part of James Gunn's plan is to make sure that everything is cons consistent across the board. Uh, and so that the, uh, let's say, if an actor plays a certain character, the actor, the same actor will play the character across the board. Whether it's in uh, TV shows, in movies, in video games, and more. Although, that might be easier said than done. Uh, basically, an actor, a movie actor, makes a lot more money than, let's say, a TV actor. And a TV actor makes a lot more money than uh, an actor making a voiceover for video games. There, there are exceptions, obviously, like uh, Mark Hamill uh, is probably making uh, big bucks for, for voicing the Joker. But uh, he's probably the exception of the exception. Although, maybe not. Maybe he really doesn't charge uh, a lot to voice uh, characters. I have no idea. But uh, getting, let's say, movie actors to voice uh, the characters in video game, uh, that's going to be a tall order. Either they're going to have to ask the actor to take a huge pay cut to be able to, to voice uh, the, the character in the video game, or the video game is going to have to pay a huge amount of money for, for the voice actors, which... Uh, Sadly, very, very often video games don't have that big of a budget for voice acting. And also there's various uh, organizations or guilds involved, like there, there is the Actors Guild. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how the Actors Guild uh, monitor or regulate how much actors are being paid for certain projects. Uh, do they allow uh, movie actors to take a huge pay cut to make uh, voiceover for video games? I have no idea. And even assuming it's possible, will actors be willing to do that? Like, uh, let's say, let's take uh, Harley Quinn and Margot Robbie. Would she be willing to take a pay cut to voice Harley Quinn in this universe online? Or to play Harley Quinn in a TV show? Or to voice uh, Harley Quinn in the animated series? And what about the, the actress currently uh, voicing Harley Quinn in the animated series? Will they fire her so that Margot Robbie, Robbie can, uh, can voice the character? Yeah, I'm just being a bit silly. Obviously, the, the current Harley Quinn uh, animated series is not connected with uh, what James Gunn is planning to do, so it would probably count as one of those else worlds. Assuming that they do keep the series around, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe they cancel the Harley Quinn uh, animated series and create a new Harley Quinn animated series. Uh, we saw that happen with Marvel. Uh, if you guys may remember, there used to be this cartoon called uh, Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. And uh, sadly, it was cancelled after two seasons, I think, to be replaced by the Disney version of the of the Avengers. Somehow, when Disney uh, purchased uh, Marvel, they decided, no more Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, we want our Avengers. And they did the same also with Spider-Man, there was this series called uh, Spectacular Spider-Man, which was uh, pretty good. But they had to cancel it and replace it with, with a new Spider-Man, with, with a new Disney Spider-Man series. So I guess something similar could happen uh, in the case of the Harley Quinn animated series. They could decide to cancel it and create a whole new series that is linked to the James Gunn DC Universe. So I guess in the case of DC Universe Online, if for some reason they have to use uh, Margot Robbie for, to, to voice Harley Quinn, and if Margot Robbie is uh, way too expensive for them, I could easily imagine them not using Harley Quinn very much in the game after that. Uh, heck, we pretty much already see that happening with uh, the Joker. It's pretty rare that we do see uh, the Joker in DC Universe Online these days. 
So I could easily see these these universe online starting to focus on obscure characters where they could use uh, some new actors that they would not have to pay a lot of money for. Uh, I guess we're gonna have to wait and see. So to answer the question, what does the DC Universe have to do with DC Universe Online? Maybe nothing. Maybe the DC Universe will DC Universe Online will be an Elseworld completely separate by itself. Or maybe it will be connected with the James Gunn DC Universe. So every decision James Gunn will make for his new DC Universe will directly impact DC Universe Online. And I guess the first uh, decision I can think of is the Batman. Uh, sadly, as you guys know, Kevin Cornroy is no longer with us. He was voicing Batman in DC Universe Online. So you have to wonder who James Gunn is going to cast to play the Batman for his DC Universe. And would that mean that that version of the Batman would end up in DC Universe Online? Uh, sadly, it is uh, too early to tell at this point. But although DC Universe Online was already trying to be a bit connected with the rest of the DC Universe, uh, for example, when we got the Black Adam movie, they did release the Sins of Black Adam DLC so that it would match with the new movie. And uh, when we got the Peacemaker TV show, they did, release, they did give us the Peacemaker helmet and the daily rewards. So they, they can sort of match with uh, the, the movies or the TV shows a little bit. Like even way back when, like when we got the season 2 of The Flash, and uh, Jay Garrick was uh, introduced in the Flash TV show. We got the Jay Garrick helmet in the game. And we also got the Flash Museum mission added to the game. So DC Universe Online has always been trying to match with the games, with the movies, with the TV shows. So I strongly suspect they would keep on trying to do that. Even if they remain separate. Even if they remain some sort of uh, else world by themselves. Uh, they always have been trying to, to match with the, the upcoming uh, DC content. And if they do decide that it is directly connected with the DC Universe, then every decision that James Gunn will make will directly impact DC Universe Online. But either way, whether it is connected or not, every decision James Gunn will make for the DC Universe will have some impact for DC Universe Online. So that is what the DC Universe have to do with DC Universe Online.